and welcome to my YouTube channel once more. Have you ever been to a hospital and after seeing a, the doctor, she requests for an investigation and part of the investigation is that you should do a full blood count and you're wondering, what does full blood count mean and why is the doctor wanting to have a look at your full blood count? Now, that's the reason for this video. I am still Dr. STM and if you've been with me in this community where we talk about different things on health, hey welcome here is a big shower for you for being here with me and if you're new to the channel you're welcome i drop videos on health news health tips disease signs and symptoms do's and don'ts interviews and stories and many more don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then click the notification bell to get your notification as soon as i post any video you're welcome here again and stay tuned as you come back from this short break So, what does full blood count mean? The first thing you need to know is this. It is also known as complete blood count. So some people, depending on where you are, Americans typically call it complete blood count. Whatever is the situation, we are talking about the same thing. When your doctor requests for your full blood count, she usually wants to take a look at three major components of your blood. First, the red blood cells then the second one the white blood cells and the third the platelets truth is the red blood cells are the reason why your blood is red in color the white blood cells are like the defense ministry of your blood of your body generally and then the platelets are like your plaster <laughs> they, they are they are the cells that come into play if you bruise or cut yourself then they try to clot it up they clog up that your bleeding spot. So these are the three major components you are taking a look at. Now let's focus first on the red blood cells. The very first thing we look at is the red blood cell counts. So this is just like a, a population taking a census of what is the number of red blood cells within this sample you collected. And there is the normal range. We don't want yours to go below or above. Of course, the normal range is different for different age groups and also different for different genders. So when we look at your results, we are looking at, wow, this is your red blood cell count. Is it okay for your age and your gender? That's one of the things we check within the red blood cell components. And then the second thing we check is what we call hematocrits, also known as the PCV. Now that PCV means packed cell volume. This one is like a a ratio that red blood cell count we got in the first time we compare it to the total volume so if we had um let's say the total volume is 100 and the red blood cell within that total volume is 40 the red blood cell count is 40 hematocrit in this case is 40 over 100 and we typically present it as percentage so when you convert it to percent by multiplying by 100 you see it is 40 percent once again, there is a different range for age groups and gender. So these are the little things we check. And then the last one, the last one is the hemoglobin level. Now this hemoglobin, it's a protein. It's actually a protein embedded within that red blood cell. And it's the singular protein that is responsible for transporting oxygen from your lungs to every other part of your body and then taking off carbon dioxide from these other parts that have you know used these things up and off back to the lungs which you breathe out that is why when we are looking at red blood cell components the particular thing we would check for is if these things are low we say the person is anemic because we understand if the person is anemic the blood may not be able to do the adequate function of carrying oxygen to the necessary places and that's why you see the person getting weak feeling dizzy and the rest because the cells are not receiving the oxygen to do the basic function of what it should do the next components 
of course, you, you remember the three, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. And the next component is the white blood cells. In simple terms, these cells are like the defense ministry of your body. They are your fighters. They are the ones that come into play when uh, a stranger comes to do some funny things. And just like we have different defense parastatals in the country, whatever country you have, we have the army, the navy, the air force. These white blood cells equally have different parastatals. And that's part of what we check in your full blood count test. When we look at your white blood cell, what we check first is the total white blood cell count. And then we start going into the what we call differentials, individual parastatal, individual groups. So the first one is the neutrophils. From the neutrophils, the second one we have is the lymphocytes, the basophils, eosinophils, and the last one, monocytes. These are different fighters for your body. So, just like most things in life, we don't want extremes. Extremes are totally undesirable. We don't want the white blood cells, whether total or differential, to be above or below the normal range, whichever. Just like when you come into a city and the city has heavy and active military presence, it gives you a signal that this looks like a war zone, something is heavily going on here. And that means if you go in and we check and your white blood cell count are way above the normal range, it tells us that something is actively going on. And in the same way, if we come in into a city and the military presence is almost absent, it just means either of these two things, like the, the city is not functioning well, or the, a stranger came in and has devoured its military system. It, so nobody is there to protect the body. So we don't want it high. We don't want it low. We want it within the normal range, and this is what we look at when we request that. In case you're being a bit curious of what these things look like, I just had to get the picture for you. Let's start with the neutrophil down there, and then the lymphocytes. They are colored too because there are two the major types of lymphocytes. You have the B cells and the T cells. Then you have the basophils, the eosinophils, and the monocytes. And these are these soldiers that I was talking about. Now we've talked about the red blood cell, the white blood cell, and then the third man there. Now when we are taking a look at this, the truth is that we, we aren't doing much work like the rest where we are doing, we are checking the red blood cell, the hematocrits, and then the hemoglobin, and the other one you're checking the total and the differential. In this one you're just checking the census, just the count. So this is what they look like. We check the counts. Is it within, within the normal range? And truth is, we don't want it again above or below. So we've talked about the red blood cells, where we take a look to know if the person is anemic or if the person has what we call polycythemia, which is a case of above the normal range. Then we take a look at the white blood cells, for example, in infectious cases, where the total white blood cells and certain differentials may be heavily raised above the normal. And you have certain cases where they may be below the normal and the rest. Then we take a look at the platelets, and these are the three major components. Now, once again, if you've just seen this video and you've not subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button and click the notification button too to get notified as soon as I drop videos at least once a week. Like I said earlier, I give different videos on health news, health tips, disease signs and symptoms, do's and don'ts, interviews and stories and the rest. And it's something you should not miss. Share this video with anybody you think that is curious about wanting to know what food blood count means so that the next time you go to see your doctor and he or she requests for this investigation, you are not lost in the air of what is the doctor trying to talk about or what is she requesting for. And thank you for staying here once more with me again. See you next week.